Starship Booster 9 stands by to blow up South Texas. NASA may use the vehicle to put people on space boulders. Falcon Heavy puts on a show. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. A week ago, SpaceX tested their kid-friendly splash pad under the OLM at Starbase, Texas. And after Friday's episode dropped, Elon and his company shared their view of the test that you're seeing now on your screen. We now know, thanks to reporting by the media, that SpaceX conducted the spray and pray, lacking permission via an environmental permit typically required by the Federal Clean Water Act. Totally making some of us reminisce over the space pirate days of S&8. But we're so back because for this test, SpaceX didn't even bother submitting an application, which the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality recommends entities do 330 days in advance. Penalties for violations can include prison and fines up to 50 grand per day. But let's be honest, they'll never hit our country's sole crude rocket provider with that, and SpaceX knows it. Not to mention the leverage SpaceX holds with the revenue and employment it generates for the state. And so currently, no determination has been made regarding whether or not environmental laws were even violated. Back to the OLM, or OLM. The scaffolding around it was removed on Wednesday as Booster 9 static fire looms in the coming days. A spin prime could happen as early as today, but I think most likely we'll see some major boobage, sorry, boomage, next week if we're lucky. Quick breaking update, as I was publishing this video, the spin prime was conducted. Not sure at this time how many engines were involved or how it went. If you've been following along with us over the past few months, you know that SpaceX plans on hot staging Starship Super Heavy, that is to say, ignite Starship's engines just prior to stage separation from the booster. Quelp, the test article that would act as an interstage, made its way to Massey's this week and was mounted by the can crusher cap to test how much stress the vents can withstand without buckling. A NASA PDF from April circulated this week, so I thought I'd briefly summarize it. The agency wants to send a crew of three, possibly on Starship, to a near-Earth asteroid to prepare for long journeys to Mars in the future. Also, so they can further understand the solar system, develop capabilities for in-situ resource utilization, and mitigate impact hazards. The mission duration would be 152 days plus 30 uncrewed days in high Earth orbit before, and 30 crewed days after the mission. Moving on meow, on Friday night, Falcon Heavy finally launched from pad 39A, carrying the heaviest satellite to GTO yet. Was deployed successfully three and a half hours after liftoff. But eight minutes after liftoff, the thrice flown side boosters that had just conducted an elegant separation minutes prior executed a flawless touchdown on landing zones one and two. Landing burn has started. Side booster landing like deploy. Then in the wee hours of Thursday morning, Falcon 9 hoisted Intelsat G37 to geosynchronous transfer orbit as well from Slick 40. Deploying the payload 32 minutes later, it was carried upon a booster flying for its sixth time, which made a touchdown on just read the instructions bobbing on the Atlantic. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. On August 1st, Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket lifted off from Wallops Island, Virginia for the 19th cargo mission to the space station. The spacecraft contains medical studies, a new water dispenser, artwork for some reason, and other research and supplies. Named the SS Laurel Clark, she made it with Canada Arm this morning. Well, that's all for this video, but it was a pleasure spending this time with you. Come back and see me next Friday, okay? Until that time, have a nominal weekend, and Godspeed. Mm -hmm.